Well, if you found yourself in these conditions, beautiful, glorious white snow, or you're going to travel in an area that's got a lot of snow to the Arctic or somewhere up north, or maybe just winter hadn't hit you just yet and you don't have this on the ground right now, and you're wondering, what, how do I shoot in all this wet stuff? How do I get good exposure? How do I get those animals looking good? Or just want to know, how do I stay warm? A lot of you come in the last few videos about, ooh, it looks cold where you're at. Well, not too bad if you know how to stay warm. And lastly, we're going to make sure we stay safe while we're out there shooting. And that's what today's video is going to be about. So, let's talk about it. Shooting in the white, that's what I call it. Because everything's white. The ground, the sky, everything. Like right now, it's snowing really light. Like, luckily, it's let up on me a little bit earlier today. It was really coming down hard. So everything's white. And how do you expose those animals with all this white? And what's crazy is it is looks really bright to the eye right now because we got complete cloud cover and the snow's white. What's happened is the light is bouncing off the ground, back to the clouds, back down, because the clouds are really low here. So you get this bounce of light that is coming through. So this is like one big softbox. You know what softbox is, what you use when you do studio, video, or lighting, things like that. You put a barrier in front of the light source to smooth it out and make it we don't have shadows. So that's what's cool right now. There are no shadows around me. So the one thing about it, you can shoot midday in this and not have shadows. But we'll get more talking about how to shoot and how to do the exposure and those type things later. But first we're going to talk about staying safe is the number one thing. Always got to stay safe no matter what you do when you go outside, especially in these conditions, especially if you come to Alaska, Canada, Norway, places like that where it's cold all the time, and you can get really cold, you go more north, it can be negative 50, negative 30. Here in Anchorage, 20, 30s, teens a lot of times, sometimes negative, but not often, so it's not that bad here in Anchorage. All right, safety, number one priority, no matter where you're at, what you're doing, especially in these conditions where you've got snow and ice and things like that. First thing is, always keep a full tank of gas before you go out. Doesn't matter if you're going 20 miles. Full tank of gas, why is that? Well, there could be plenty of times this happened where we've been driving down a road, not real populated road, we'll see a car in the ditch, flashers on. That person, sometime during that day, slid off the road into the ditch, and they're sitting there. We've had to pull them out before. We've even had one of our cars. We usually go in pairs. These don't go alone. So if you can get a buddy to have another car, great. The reason that is, happened to me in Nelchick. Right behind my buddy Casey, we're driving. I'm literally right behind him. My, t my tire ruts are in his tire ruts. He stops in front of me. I stop behind him. My right front tire goes, Shh. We were so close to the edge of that road. There's a ditch there. It dropped down about three or four feet. It slid right down in there. Got that front right tire in my truck down in that. Couldn't get back out of it. It was wedged in there. Luckily, Casey's with me. Had a tow strap. That's one thing also. Make sure in your vehicle you have a tow strap sitting there because either for you to pull somebody out or somebody to pull you out. And he could just pull me, popped right out of there. No problem. The young lady that we ran across out in Girdwood was in the ditch. She had been there for about two hours. She was calling everybody she could, but everybody was in Anchorage, which was 30, 40 miles away. So there was going to take them an hour or two to get out there, wreck her even longer. So luckily we came along, straps on her, popped right out of the ditch, not a problem. So if she'd had less than a full tank of gas, then how long you're going to be out there? You could be out there overnight. The reason to have a full tank of gas, you keep the truck running, your car running, and that way you keep warm and you won't freeze. So at least the next thing about that, about safety, keep snacks and water in your vehicle. Those again, don't know how long you're gonna be out. And also, yes, this looks nice and like a lot of wet and stuff. You can dehydrate really fast in the cold because it just pulls it right out of your body. So always keep water in there to keep yourself hydrated after going out and walking for a long time. And also snacks, granola bars, things like that. That can keep you going. Stuff that'll stay well in your truck for a long time too, in case you just leave it in there. And that'll keep you in case you have another accident, problem like that. Another big item to have in the car is have a bag that has another change of clothes. Socks, pants, sweatshirt, t-shirt, stuff like that. Another pair of shoes and keep it in the car. And why is that? Well, there's another story with Casey, a friend of mine, because we used to shoot a lot. And we were out walking with Girdwood. We were looking with the Dr. Seuss trees, as I call them. So when you get all this snow real heavy, these smaller little cedar trees or some that are blow. 10 feet or so, they start bending over like the old Dr. Seuss shows and stuff. And so we're photographing these guys. We're walking out there. And again, it's around Thanksgiving, so it's real early in the season. 
So we're walking across here. We walk across a little, little bit of a small draw there. Casey walks across. I step across. My foot goes down. There's a little bitty stream right there with a little bit of ice on it. When I stepped on just on the edge, shouldn't follow Casey around because the truck and now this incident. It's kind of funny. And my right foot slipped went down through the, around the ice, and it was only about that deep. It was real shallow, but it was just enough for my leg to turn that way, to slide, for my leg to go under the ice at my knee. So it was kind of, my leg was underneath me like that, under the ice, I'm down on my knee. My camera, Casey heard it. I just had to take the camera, <laughs> and then I got myself out of that, pulled it up there. The problem being, now my leg, from about mid-thigh down, and my boot is full of mud and water, and I'm wet and we're about a quarter mile from the vehicle. So we head back to the truck because I'm cold and got a muddy foot and it's cold. And if I kept kept going, I'd have a problem with my feet and I'd be too cold. So go back to the truck. So normally I'd be done for the day. I'd act because I don't have anything warm. I can't shoot anymore. And of course, Casey can't shoot anymore either. But luckily when I had a bag in the vehicle, I had a change of pants, a change of socks, and another pair of shoes to be out in this type of weather. So real quickly, I just stripped all that off real quick in the truck, changed out, we're back out shooting for another several hours. So it saved the day. Another thing is, it may not be saving your day to go back out and shoot. Maybe that during the day while you're out shooting, like I've done with Otter several times, my pants are covered in snow and ice, which is fine when I'm out there, but when I get in the truck, it all melts. Even though I got ski pants and stuff on, it will eventually go through it and you'll be wet. So get back the vehicle, you can strip those off, throw them in the back of the vehicle somewhere, and put on some drier clothes so you'll stay warm so when that doesn't melt out. So that's why you keep that change of clothes. Even in the summer I have changed clothes because I never know if I'm gonna get in the mud or wet or whatever. Because photography, I'm always down in the muck, in the mess. And another one is right here. This little thing right here. This will save your butt. They're ice cleats. Not your normal ice cleats, because you know you have those little micro spikes you go when it kind of gets, uh, you know, like Oklahoma, you get a little ice storms and stuff, so you got those. But these guys are serious spikes. So they're a little more, they're, these are made out of cobalt too, so they won't tear up. And why do you want these? Well, if you got a little more snow like this, and there's ice underneath it, sometimes you get that snow and you get that ice, you got micros on, you'll get clogged up with snow, a little bit of ice, and you can't get around. But these thicker ones will dig in deeper and get hold of that ice, especially if you're climbing up any type of incline. I got a couple places like Windy Point where you go hiking. And if I didn't have these on, I'd be falling over my butt. So these are nice. When I was shooting the last video, you saw me slip and slide. But I had my cleats on, I'd have been doing a lot better. Now, the biggest piece of safety equipment if you're going out in this, we talk about, you know, getting stuck in the snow and all that thing, is one of these guys. And this one happens to be one by Garmin called InReach. These are satellite GPS communicators. And the biggest part on here, it has a button, SOS button on them. So a couple things with these. If you're out, your family doesn't know where you're at or friends or whatever, they can track you by the GPS with these. You've got it turned on with the service. If you get stuck, you get lost, you have problems, hit that SOS button, rescue's coming to you. So I carry this thing with me pretty much everywhere I go. If I'm in Kodiak, I'm out here because we lose cell service. That's why you want the satellite one here. You want the satellite because once you lose cell signal, you can't use your phone to call for help. This is the only thing that's going to get you help. If I'm up hiking on a mountain by myself or even with friends, one of us hurts ourselves, falls, breaks a leg, we can't get them down the hill, up the hill, whatever or things like that. Let's say when I slipped on that ice, say my leg got caught, I'm stuck. Luckily, we were within cell service area. We've been somewhere else. Only thing that would have helped us was having one of these hit this SOS button because you lose cell signal up here in Alaska. So always check the cell signal where you're going. If you don't have it, keep this thing with you all the time. These attach to your backpack, whatever. Just keep them with you. I used to have in a pocket in my pack because if I need it, I'll go out and grab the SOS and get it. But these things can save your life. And the last major safety tip before we get into about talking about staying warm, have a first aid kit in the car at all times. Should be a no-brainer to have in your vehicle anyway, but definitely when you're out in this cold, because what happens, the colder you get, the easier it is to cut yourself. You can get your skin really cold out, and you can barely brush against something, it will cut your skin. So 
make sure you have a first aid kit. You may not even feel it when it happens. You may not notice it until you get back in, you start thawing out, you notice you got a good cut. So make sure you got a first aid kit for any of those type of things. In the cold, you do cut more. All right, let's get into this one. This is the one you guys probably want to know about this besides the shooting itself. So how do I stay warm? Because a lot of you guys are commenting about, oh, just watch the video, maybe you feel cold. And yes, it can get cold. When you get the negative 20s and 30s, you're getting up past Fairbanks. That's cold, that's miserable. Here in Anchorage, like right now, it's 26 degrees. We may dip in the teens or maybe a little bit negative sometimes for the most part of the winter. We're in, you know, 20s, 30s in that range, so it's not bad. And that's what I can dress like. I don't have my heavy coat or anything on right now, but we'll talk about that. So the main thing you can do, anybody tell you this about weather with cold, is dress in layers. Have a good base layer for like your pants, have a good base layer, a pair of sweats or something like that. And then have snow pants. For a photographer, get you a pair of snow pants, like the ones I got on. Not that you really see them, but you can get these at Bass Pro, Cabela Sportsman's, any of your little sporting goods stores, especially if you just get up in those regions, they'll have them. These things are $30 to $50, so they're not real expensive, and they're great to have. They keep you warm. And the main thing is, as photographers, we want to stay dry. So if I plop down the snow and ski pants, so what they're made for to fall in the snow, I'm good and dry. They're great, and they're really rough, and you're not going to tear them up. So they're really great pants had these for several years and they did not no problem whatsoever and i'm rough on them so dressing layers for your tops again base layer t-shirt maybe another shirt over that sweatshirt and then whatever level of coat you need and then finally the three major parts that you really have to keep warm because all this from your top to your bottom for your pants to your, your shirts and sweatshirts that's pretty easy to dump with layers on where it's hard to put a lot of layers on is the three main parts of your body got to keep warm. Feet, hands, head. So I love my little Sitka hat here. It's got ears on it too. So in days like when it's really cold, I need something for my ears. Perfect. Felt line, warm, keeps everything off. Look like a dork with it on, but it really keeps your ears warm. So something to cover your ears. So ear warmers or a hat, uh, you know, a little beanie, anything like take stuff, keep your head warm because you're gonna lose most of that heat out of your head. That's that one. Truck's right there, so I'm throwing stuff in it. All right, now feet. Feet are a big one. So you gotta keep your feet warm in all this stuff because a lot of times you're just standing around waiting for something to happen or you're watching an owl for two hours for it to do something or you're standing out there waiting on a fox at a fox den or Things like that, because animals don't move a lot in that time of year, so a lot of times you're sitting waiting on them, so you're standing out in that snow for hours. I think with the owl, where I got the drop down, I chased that guy for like 10 days, followed him every morning for 10 days over the holiday, standing out there some days for hours and hours, just never got an open spot, and then finally after about the ninth or 10th day, I can't remember how long it was, he finally got there, dropped on a vole, got the shot of him hitting on the ground. It was just great. But keeping your feet warm is the main thing. So the main thing is socks. So if you can get a silk type sock as your base layer, you want two layers for those when it's really, really cold. And the next one is some type of uh, thermal sock. And there's thermal ratings on all your socks. Look at them. I think the ones that I use, if I remember, I think the name is heat holders. Um, sounds like the hand warmer thing, but it's called by heat holders. Thing. Our smart wools are a good one too, but anything that's a nice heavy wool or that uh, aluminum type fibers in the wool is gonna hold the heat. Those, those heat holder socks, as soon as you put them on, you can tell they're warm. And then get you some good boots that are waterproof and has some type of insulation in them. So you want to definitely do that. So find you a good pair of boots. The ones I try to find have the BOA system on them where you pop it off and just turn it. I don't have to work with laces. So I really like those type of boots if I can find them. They're really hard to find anymore. How many companies are making them? That's it. As far as gloves go, that's a hodgepodge. There's so many gloves out here. Right now I just have some little lighter medium gloves on. These are actually, I think, bow hunting gloves, what they are. Um, but get a double thickness of gloves you need it's really hard because even with the ones that the finger comes off i've got several of those i can never get that one that comes off the thumb and the finger these the tips are always cold no matter what even if you put them back on they're too cold so those annoy me a little bit what i found the best was really cold is some heavy mittens that you can take these type gloves are a little thicker put them inside those mittens or get mittens that have the fold out. Those really keep your hands warm when you really need a cold. But you gotta have those fingers out to be able to work the camera. Now, another thing you do with your hands to keep them warm is, I'm sure all of you have seen these. These are just the hot hands, warmers and stuff. These are fine. I don't really like them because I'm always sitting shaking. I'm trying to get more heat out of them. They're not bad. These are great in a pinch. It's good. I've got a whole 
big monster pack. I bought at Cabela's of these in my truck at all times. They just stay in there. If somebody needs one or if I need one, I've got it. But I'm going to show you something that's a lot better. I have all kinds of crap in that truck. And it's these little guys. And they're made by Zippo. And I have about four of these and two of these bigger guys. And they fit really good in your hands. So what are they? Well, they're power banks, but they're also a heater. So you just turn them on and they're just sitting in your pocket. You just put them in your pocket and leave them in there. You're out shooting, doing whatever you're doing. Hands get cold, put your hand in your pocket and then grab hold of these guys. Now, when they're just sitting in your pocket, when you first grab them, they don't feel really warm. But the longer you hold it there, it doesn't take long, these things start to get really hot. So as I'm shooting, 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 my fingertips are getting a little cold because that's usually what gets cold first. I can put my hands in my pocket, wrap my hand around that, and that gets those fingertips back warm. So these guys right here, I'm using those heat holders, those hand warmers. They don't really do that very well. And they do make gloves that have little zips in the back. I do have some bigger ones that have zips. You can put those heat holders back there. But again, I don't like those. Just heat the back of my hand. I need my fingertips in the front of my hand warm. But these guys right here are the best thing ever. When I found these, it made shooting up here. Don't have my cleats on. Almost fell. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> That's the main thing. Man, I got to show you my cleats is why. But these Zippos right here, hand warmers, power bank, great. Plus, you can also charge them enough if you need to. And these guys last most of the day. The big one will last a good full day. These smaller ones, they'll uh, they'll make it through most of the day. Um, they all notice they'll start going down in power after a while. So um, get you several of these. And they're not real expensive. I, I want to say these are twenty, fifty dollars somewhere in there. They're not really bad. And these are the best thing I have ever bought for winter photography. Just fantastic. So really, that's the main part about keeping warm up here. Dress in layers. Once you got those layers, the reason other reason you dress in layers is if you're getting too hot, you can take a layer off. You can take your coat off, be a little cooler. You can take your coat off and a heavier sweatshirt or something you got. And, you know, you can work those layers to get the level of comfort that you need for being out. And the longer you're out, the hotter you're going to get on those base layers. So make sure you've got those silk socks underneath your wool socks things like that's going to dissipate moisture don't wear cotton socks out there i forgot to tell you that don't wear cotton socks problem is because if your feet do sweat moisture gets in that cotton socks it's going to freeze the wool and the silk ones are going to pull that moisture off your foot so you won't you know freeze your foot so that's the biggest thing sweat and water in this type of environment is the killer for you that'll get you the worst part so if your hands are starting to get cold, your fingertips getting cold, even you're using warmers, whatever, and you can't get those hands warm, feet are getting too cold, your toes are getting too cold and numb, call it, get out of there. Don't risk it. Getting too cold, you're gonna get frostbite, or just it takes forever for your feet and your hands to warm back up when that happens, when it gets your knuckles into those toes. Get out of there, don't risk it. Just boogie, you can always come back later. It's not worth hurting yourself on that stuff. All right, let's get into the part of the video that all you guys want to know. There's stuff that you're really here for about the gear and about the shooting, how to shoot in that snow. First thing I'm going to talk about is how to keep your camera safe, working, all those fun things. First thing, batteries. So what about batteries? Well, battery life drains the colder it is. So your battery life is going to be a lot shorter than it was in a normal warm day. So what do you do? Well, you keep extra batteries with you. Never leave with just one battery. Don't The battery in your camera ain't going to do it. The Z9 battery is huge, lasts a long time, but I still will drain this battery faster in the winter. So have an extra battery with you. So how do you carry that battery? That's a big one. Don't put it in your backpack. Don't put it in those type of things. You want to put it inside pocket of your coat that's close to your body. Why is it? Or maybe for me, in this part of the hoodie here, if I've got a coat on over it, but somewhere where I'm not going to drop it, the hoodie's not the best place, and I have a zippered hoodie, Put the pocket inside of your jacket, find one that has it, put it there. That is because the body heat of your body is going to keep that battery warm, it's going to have a longer life. So now, one of the big things about keeping that camera safe is from scratches, bumps, drops, and, and moisture, things like that. Well, the first thing you can get for your camera that's going to help that is this little guy right here. It's just a lens coat neoprene cover for your camera. That 180 to 600, I've got a kit, I've got to put that on there, just haven't got around to put it on there, but I'll probably be doing that this weekend. Put that kit on there. And it's just in different pieces. You can see this diagram right here. And that just goes on each piece there. You probably see it on my 500 F4, some other lenses. And what this does is keeps it from getting little dings. It's not going to protect it completely, but it's going to help it if you set it on rocks and things like that. It's not a scratch up your camera. Keeps dust and dirt off of it. 
and it keeps it a little bit of moisture protection and the elements from getting on the barrel itself so these things are great to have uh, the camo patterns I mean if you're into the camo stuff you know with, with the different stuff some places you need to be camoed up so it also helps get the right camo I always go with the winter camo on my cameras because I'm usually in this environment or if I'm on a beach the rocks are gray and white so this blends in pretty good so that's the first part I'm gonna have a mess in that truck later and the next one is this guy another product by lens coat and this one's a rain cover these things are great they slide across your whole camera, got spots for your hands, you zip them on there. If you watch the Kodiak video, you'll see us having the raincoats on our cameras. No matter what the weather ceiling is, this morning I should have had the raincoat on, but I didn't realize it was going to snow that hard. It wasn't supposed to, but it came down really hard. So I probably should have gone back to the truck and got this. Again, do what I say, not what I do. I do a lot of dumb stuff, but this thing really helps. The lens coat, rain cover are the best ones out there in the market that I've found so far. If you know of another one, leave me in the comment what one that is. All right, another good tip when you're out in the snow to keep your camera and yourself safe is have a good strap. Let me grab my camera again. So my favorite strap is these here by Peak Design because I'm six foot five and this is probably the longest strap I found and it is tough. And the reason I say that is if you go ahead and you know, you, your hand holding your lens without a strap in the winter, you're gonna have a problem. This goes to safety also. So if you got this guy slung around you, your hands are free. If you got your hands, both hands, that's good. But if you're walking up the trail and your footing slips and you got hold of this camera, you and the camera are probably gonna hit the ground. So that's two things to do. Is got this, now your hands are free. And if you're in a slicker condition, so if you usually got your hands in your pocket keeping them warm. But if you get a more slick condition, get your hands out of your pocket because that's gonna help you balance better. So if you don't have to hold on to this lens and you slip like that, you've got your hands out, you can balance yourself. Uh, well, us humans, for some reason our hands are like animals' tails. It kind of keeps us balanced. But when you're walking in slick conditions, it can apply anywhere. Anytime it's slick, wet, rainy, icy, keep your hands out of your pocket. That's one of the things I learned at a young age when you're walking across the street on ice storms and when I grew up in Oklahoma. But yeah, keep your hands out of your pocket. All right. So the next bit of gear that you really want for your camera, we talked about the apron covers, rain covers, the good straps, so you keep your hands free. Next thing is your tripods. So, carbon fiber. I had a couple people comment, which uh, if you live in cold conditions and you're shooting in Aurora or a lot of Astro at night, you've learned this trick about using a carbon fiber as opposed to aluminum. Uh, people will say this carbon fiber cracks. Uh, me and John, and other people would go out, John goes up, way up above the arctic circle shoot aurora he's in negative 50 negative 70 degrees at times carbon fiber they don't crack never had one crack now they could but these new carbon fiber they're not going to crack and when i'm around here it's not that bad if i use aluminum why well, don't use aluminum one is wet you don't want to get wet on aluminum especially if we get in the ocean but the next one is and we're around the wa ocean water all the time is because of frost so with frost when you're shooting overnight it gets in here and the leg locks up. So these little guys will not open. They either won't open or if you can't open them, you can't close them. Many times we've had to throw the tripods in the back of the truck. There's the only place you can put them because they're fully extended and they won't go in the back of the car or the truck. So get yourself a good carbon fiber tripod for shooting in the snow because it's wet. When it falls out, it's not going to rust. And then you won't lock up when you try to close it. <laughs> All right, last little bit of gear, a uh, tip on a piece of gear. If you're going out and you got your lens cap on, you're taking it off. I usually take mine off and leave them in the vehicle. But if you take an extra lens, got a lens cap. Get you a piece of really thick colored tape you can put on that lens, or if you can get your lens colored or order a third party lens cap that's like a bright orange or yellow or thing like that, put that on there, why? Well, if you're walking around, you drop that lens cap, it hits that snow, goes in, it's black. It's hard to tell because you see a lot of black cracks or crevices, but if you've got orange or yellow or whatever, just like a golf ball playing in the winter, you will see a lot easier. That's one. Next thing, if you've got your lens hood on and you get out of your vehicle, your vehicle's warm, you're jumping out real quick, take a shot. If you keep your lens hood on, what you'll notice sometimes your images are kind of soft. And why is that? Well, when you get out of the truck, the air inside this lens hood is warmer. 
So when you get out, it takes a second for that air inside the lens hood to really come out of there. It takes a little bit, a few minutes for it really comes out. There's a couple of videos talking about it, showing examples. So what you do is, when you first get out of the vehicle, take your lens hood off, set it aside, or keep hold of it. Go ahead and shoot without the lens hood for a while, and then later, put your lens hood back on. And what that does is make sure you don't get some soft images. It's kind of a thing I do first. A lot of times I walk around for quite a bit, but if I'm going to jump out of the truck real quick, get a shot, I take that lens hood off so I don't get soft shots right out of the gate. But after a minute or two, it should go away. So if you've got a four or five minutes before you see your animal or just going looking, don't worry about that lens hood thing. But those are the last two little things as far as equipment goes. Now, we're going to talk about how to shoot in the snow, but let's wait for tomorrow. I'm losing my light. You may have noticed it starts getting darker and darker and darker. I kept trying to raise my exposure a little bit, but it's getting a little bit dark out here. Uh, it is a whopping 4.30 in the afternoon, so we get about seven hours of daylight this time of year. Uh, the solstice is around December 20th, somewhere in there. I don't know what day it is this year. It's around 19, 20, 21st, somewhere in there. That's our shortest day. And it's a little, I think it's a little under seven hours. Right now we've got a little over seven hours. Uh, about 9.30 the sun comes up and it's going down here about 4.35. So I'm out of light. So tomorrow we'll talk about how to shoot in the snow. I did get some good video today. I'll talk about that in a bit. So I will talk to you tomorrow. But for you, it'll be just a good blink of the eye. Talk to you in a minute. Well, I hope so far this video has been helpful about shooting and the things you need in the snow, about being safe, staying warm, and the gear you need to go out and shoot in this beautiful environment. But I decided to make this in two parts this video because I started editing, I was already plus 20 minutes on the video already. So I decided to split this in two pieces while we covered this one already. And the next one will be about going out in this glorious white stuff and shooting in the snow and how to get good exposure, how to get good shots of your animals amongst the snow and all that stuff. So that next video will probably drop on Tuesday or Thursday. So just leave me in the comments, tell me, you know, would you rather see it on Tuesday or rather see it on Thursday? Which day would you like to see the next video? And then we'll have our normal Sunday videos every time. And then to the big thing about a giveaway, we get 9,000 subscribers for the channel. Just fantastic. I can't believe we're at 9,000. Just blows my mind. And we'll do another print giveaway. So I already posted on the community board of what the print's going to be. So how do you enter that? Pretty simple. Subscribe to the channels one. Second thing is leave me a comment down below about the image or about the video. Actually, you know what? Tell me about your experiences about shooting in the snow. and Or if you haven't shot in the snow, do you plan on going out in the snow or why you wouldn't? Anything. Just talk about snow photography, white photography, anything like that. And that will be the entry for that. Subscribe, leave that comment, and then we'll get it. Next bit of news is talking about 10,000 subscribers. I'm really trying, hopefully we hit 10,000 before Christmas. So we'll have a Christmas plus 10,000 giveaway. And I've got two spectacular items that you're really going to like that are part of the giveaway that a couple vendors supplied to me. Just going to be really cool when I announce those. So we'll announce those club we get a lot closer to 10K. But uh, guys, like, subscribe, all those fun things, and get outside and go run that shutter.